A glimmer of hope in the COVID surge here in New York. Could mandates soon be lifted? A brief break from the cold, but we'll tell you when that Arctic air makes a comeback. You can mind your own beeswax, essential oils, and more. New York Live's bringing us the story behind a Brooklyn lip balm brand and a look at how the beauty staples made. This is News for Now for January 12th. I'm Kay Ingram. And finally, some good news. The COVID situation here in New York appears to be getting better. So much so, Governor Kathy Hochul says the state's indoor mask mandate could go away in a few weeks. The percentage of positive COVID cases appears to be trending downward, suggesting it may have peaked. Now, for the first time since the Omicron variant first spiked, the governor had some good news for New Yorkers. Looks like we might be cresting over that peak. This is, uh, to me, a, a glimmer of hope, a glimmer of hope at a time when we desperately need that. Now, before you get to celebrating, hospitalizations are still on the rise, but we're told that the increase is at a slower rate which is expected to decline by next month. Meanwhile, over in New Jersey, we're hearing that masks are sticking around in schools for the foreseeable future. The school mask requirement was set to expire Tuesday, but Governor Phil Murphy reinstated the state's public health emergency. It comes as students in Patterson head back to classrooms next week after two weeks of virtual learning. Next, new legal action is being taken in that deadly Bronx apartment fire that killed 17 people. A woman who says she and her husband barely made it out alive is targeting the city and the building's owner for $1 billion in damages. Rosa Reyes and her husband claim the defendants were negligent. They say doors failed to close automatically, as required, and the landlord knew about it. That door situation allowed smoke to pour up the stairway that the couple used to escape. Rhea says her husband collapsed and is now in critical condition. His lung capacity is near zero. He's on a respirator and unable to breathe on his own. So you know, the, the odds on being able to come back from that are very slim. A representative for the building's owners insists there were no open violations for the doors in question at the time of the fire. And city housing officials say violations filed against the previous owner were corrected. Also in the Bronx, the NYPD is looking for a man and woman wanted for a violent attack. And guys, I have to warn you, the details are disturbing. Police say the two argued with a 50-year-old man inside a bodega in the Van Ness section on Morris Park Avenue the day after Christmas. They then proceeded to attack him outside the store. The woman beat the victim with a hammer and the man fired a gun. The victim had to get stitches and is recovering. Now we're told the shot the suspect fired hit the side of the store. Okay, so what is a so-called meth burrito? a chainsaw, and a bullet deodorant have in common? Well, these are real things that real people thought would be a good idea to uh, bring into an airport. The TSA dropped its top 10 catches of 2021 list, detailing their weirdest finds. New Jersey airports made the list twice. What's going on over there? Newark Liberty International Airport was number nine on the list after a long-barreled revolver with a wooden grip was found in August. Number 10 on the list, Atlantic City International Airport. Someone tried to get through airport security with six bullets hidden in a deodorant stick in September. Other items across the country include meth hidden in a burrito, beer spray, and a number one on this list was a chainsaw at New Orleans International Airport. Coming off the heels of our coldest weather so far this season, it's nice to talk about a warm up, even if it lasts just a couple of days. We'll take it. Highs getting back into the 40s both Wednesday and Thursday. And then that's it. Temperatures come crashing back down again. Friday, I think, is OK. It's our transition day. But then by the weekend, it's another blast of Arctic air. Pretty similar, if not colder. 
to what we just got through. And then looking ahead at our next chance of snow could be timed up for the holiday on Monday. Let's just walk you through what's going on. High pressure out to the east of us is bringing that warm air in for the next couple of days. A little cold front is going to slip through on Friday. That's where that really chilly air comes in for the weekend. And then watch the system coming up the coast Sunday night into Monday. Still some question about whether or not this will bring rain or snow, but we'll keep a close eye on it for what could be a very messy Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day on Monday. New Year, new you? I know that's right. Well, no matter how you're dressing it up, there is one product that's universally flattering, lip balm. New York Live is here with the story behind one local business that's whipping up the beauty staple from a Brooklyn kitchen. Check it out. Now that the weather's gotten colder, I do not go anywhere without my lip balm. But today I'm going to learn how to make it in the kitchen where New York-based lip balm brand Love and Sage got its start. Well, Sage, thanks for having us in your beautiful home. Thank you for And in coming. your kitchen where I think this is the birthplace of your brand. It is. I started Love and Sage in my kitchen in Carroll Gardens, Brooklyn. It's an all-natural, organic line of lip balms. Well, since this kitchen is where the magic happened, I would love for you to show me how to make a lip balm. Yes, I would love that. Let's go. Ooh, this smells really good. Is that the Neroli? It's the Rose Auto. Oh, the Rose Auto. Okay, I'm, I'm putting this one in my lip balm. Okay, so, <laughs> so where do we start? So we're using a double boiler, so it doesn't get too hot. We're going to do three tablespoons of beeswax. We might have a little little too much, but hey, extra lip balm We for can us, always right? add more oil. We're going to do two tablespoons of coconut oil and then a quarter cup of organic oils. You can sort of like pick and choose what you want to do. Mostly it's going to be jojoba and then we'll add a little castor oil for shine. We're going to make, it's not going to be love and sage, it's going to be Michelle and sage. That's what we're calling this one. <laughs> Put it all into the pot. We're going to melt it. And then how long do you normally leave us on the stove for? Just until it melts. So now it's time to fill the tubes and I'm gonna give you the syringe to use. You can just, you know, fill it all the way up, squirt it into <laughs> the lip balm tube, and then we just have to wait for them to cool. Okay. Ah, that came out a lot faster than I thought it would. Wow. Oh, see, you must be making lip balm in your kitchen because that's a much smoother process for Sage than it was for me. And then we just let them cool. It's only been like, Three minutes and they're they already look like real lip balm. Yeah. I kind of love that it's warm. How does it look? It's fresh. It's beautiful. This has been so fun. Thank you so much for showing me You're how to make so welcome. lip balm. You're a natural. I mean it's so much easier than I thought it would be. It is a Broadway actor's full circle moment. Company star Claiborne Elder recently handed out free tickets to fans. An effort to pay it forward 15 years after a chance encounter changed his life. News 4's Anjali Hemphill shows us just how powerful a random act of kindness can be. 15 years ago, I went to go and see the Putnam County Spelling Bee. And I was standing in the standing room and I... <laughs> This is the moment Claiborne Elder reunited with a total stranger who helped change the direction of his life. This story goes back 15 years when Elder took this photo with a man named Mark Howell while he was visiting New York City as a young 23-year-old aspiring actor. We had both just seen a show and he said, you look like you were enjoying the show more than most other people. Here's $200, go buy yourself tickets to Sweeney Todd. But, you know, I said, you have to <laughs> promise me Promise me that you'll use, you'll use this money to see Sweeney Todd because it's, it is life changing. It's, it's theater changing and, and, and that's what you need to see as an actor. Little did Howell know those words and kind gesture would guide Elder to do just that. Years later, he's now working alongside some of those same actors from Sweeney Todd in Broadway's company and recently became inspired to share this story and photo on Instagram along with tickets to his show that he purchased to give away. What happened first is that donations started pouring in. All of these people started asking me if they could buy more tickets. Elder says since the post, donations have paid for almost 100 people to attend a Broadway show, and he was able to reunite with the person that set him on his path. Most of the time, none of us ever know how powerful our kindness is in another person's life. You know, we don't know. We never have the gift of what I just got of seeing that my kindness 
matter to somebody's life. A full circle back moment now helping to pay it forward. Even though it's 15 years later, we're passing on this kindness that he passed to me somehow. Uh, and I think that I hope that all of these people who are getting to see the show for free, I hope that they in turn feel inspired to do something kind for someone else. Anjali Hemphill, News 4, New York. All right, friends. Well, thanks for joining us. I'm Kay Ingram. We'll see you back here tomorrow.